Guardian of Shialkodi underscore Protector of the Realm. Episode 6 The Epic Conclusion. Ancient Shadows, New Era, Last Stand. Prologue. The Calm Before the Storm. The journey back to the Bastion of the Silvermoon was fraught with anticipation. Ayaman and Kalaratri travelled swiftly, knowing that every moment counted. The defeat of Saren had brought a temporary reprieve, but the final battle was inevitable. The dark tide was gathering its strength, and the sacred alliance had to be ready. As they arrived at the bastion, Ayaman felt the weight of what was to come. The fortress was abuzz with activity, as warriors, mages, and healers made their final preparations. The tension in the air was palpable, but so too was the resolve. This was it, their last stand against the forces of darkness. Alara, Thrain, and Arion met them at the gates. The relief on their faces was clear, but so too was the understanding that the battle ahead would be the greatest challenge yet. You did it, Alara said, her voice filled with a mix of admiration and worry. But we all know the fight isn't over. Ayaman nodded. Saren is gone, but the dark tide is still coming. We need to hold the bastion until the very end. This is our last chance to protect Shialkodi. Kalaratri stepped forward, her gaze steady. We fight for the world, for everything we hold dear. We've come too far to turn back now. As night fell, the leaders of the Sacred Alliance gathered in the war room to finalize their strategy. They knew the odds were against them, but they also knew that they had no choice but to fight with everything they had. The battle begins. Dawn broke over the bastion, casting a golden light over the fortress and the surrounding lands. But the beauty of the morning was overshadowed by the dark clouds gathering on the horizon. The forces of darkness were on the move, a massive army stretching as far as the eye could see. Demons, corrupted beasts, and twisted sorcerers marched in unison, their intent clear, to wipe out the last bastion of hope. Ayaman stood atop the walls, his sword at his side, watching as the dark tide approached. The warriors of the Sacred Alliance took their positions, each one knowing that this would be the fight of their lives. Arion, his hands glowing with arcane energy, stood ready to unleash his spells. Thrain, his axe gleaming in the light, let out a battle cry that echoed across the walls. Alara, her bow drawn, took aim at the approaching enemy, her arrows ready to rain down upon them. The first wave of the dark tide crashed against the walls, and the battle began in earnest. The warriors of the Sacred Alliance fought with everything they had, but the enemy was relentless. The walls of the bastion shook under the onslaught, but they held firm. Ayaman led the charge, his sword a blur of light as he cut down the demons that came at him. Kalaratri fought by his side, her claws and fangs tearing through the enemy ranks. Together, they were a force to be reckoned with, but even they knew that this was only the beginning. As the battle raged on, Ayaman felt the presence of something darker, something more powerful than anything they had faced before. A chill ran down his spine as he realized what it was. The dark tide was being led by a new force, one that had taken over in the wake of Saren's defeat. Suddenly, the ground beneath them began to shake, and a massive figure emerged from the ranks of the dark tide. It was a demon lord, towering over the battlefield, its eyes burning with malice. This was the true leader of the dark forces, a being of immense power that had been lying in wait, biding its time until the moment was right. Ayaman knew that this was it, the final confrontation. The demon lord was the key to the dark tide's power, and if they could defeat it, they could turn the tide of the battle. Focus on the demon lord. Ayaman shouted to his comrades. If we take it down, the rest will fall. The warriors of the Sacred Alliance rallied around Ayaman, their spirits lifted by his words. They fought with renewed vigor, cutting through the enemy ranks as they made their way toward the Demon Lord. The Final Confrontation 
The battle reached a fever pitch as Ayaman and his comrades faced off against the demon lord. The creature was massive, its skin as tough as iron and its claws as sharp as blades. But Ayaman was undeterred. He knew that this was the moment he had been preparing for his entire life. With a roar, Ayaman charged at the demon lord, his sword blazing with the light of the ley lines. Kalaratri was right behind him, her eyes glowing with a fierce determination. The demon lord swung its massive claws at them, but they dodged and struck back with everything they had. Arion and Alara provided support from a distance, their spells and arrows striking the demon lord with precision. Thrain, his axe swinging with deadly force, hacked away at the creature's legs, trying to bring it down. But the demon lord was strong, stronger than anything they had faced before. It fought back with a ferocity that shook the very earth, and for a moment, it seemed as if the sacred alliance might be overwhelmed. But Ayaman refused to give up. Drawing on the power of the ley lines, he unleashed a final, desperate attack. His sword, infused with both light and shadow, cut through the demon lord's defenses and struck at its heart. The demon lord let out a terrible scream as the light of the ley lines enveloped it, burning away the darkness that had fueled its power. The creature collapsed to the ground, its body dissolving into ash. For a moment, the battlefield was silent. The dark tide, sensing the loss of its leader, faltered. The warriors of the sacred alliance seized the opportunity and launched a final, all-out attack, driving the enemy back. As the last of the dark tide retreated, a cheer went up from the walls of the bastion. They had done it, they had won. The forces of darkness had been defeated, and the realm of Shialkodi was safe once more. Hash 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 epilogue. A new dawn. As the sun rose over the battlefield, Ayaman stood with his comrades, surveying the aftermath of the battle. The cost had been great, but the victory was theirs. The bastion of the Silvermoon had held, and the Dark Tide had been vanquished. Ayaman knew that the fight was not truly over, the forces of darkness would always be a threat, and the ley lines would always need to be protected. But for now, they had earned a moment of peace. Kalaratri stood beside him, her gaze fixed on the horizon. We did it, she said quietly. We protected the realm. Ayaman nodded a sense of calm washing over him. We did. But this is just the beginning. There will always be battles to fight, and we'll be ready. As the dawn broke, bathing the land in golden light, Ayaman knew that the future was uncertain. But he also knew that as long as there were guardians to protect the realm, there would always be hope. The guardian of Shialkodi had fulfilled his duty, but his journey was far from over. And as the sun rose on a new day, Ayaman looked forward to the challenges that lay ahead, ready to face them with the strength and courage that had guided him through every battle. The realm of Shialkodi was safe, for now. But the guardian would always be vigilant, standing watch over the world he had sworn to protect. Prologue. A world transformed. The battle for Shialkodi was over, and the dark tide had been driven back into the shadows. The bastion of the Silver Moon stood victorious, its defenders weary but proud. However, the world they had fought so hard to protect had been irrevocably changed. The scars of war were evident across the land. Villages lay in ruins, forests scorched, and lay lines destabilized. The peace they had won had come at a steep price. Ayaman, the guardian of Shialkodi, surveyed the battlefield from the walls of the bastion. His heart was heavy with the weight of all that had been lost, but he also felt a deep sense of resolve. The fight for the realm might have ended, but the journey to rebuild had only just begun. The Council of Elders. In the days following the battle, a council was convened at the bastion of the Silvermoon. Leaders from all corners of Shialkodi gathered to discuss the future of the realm. Alara, Thrain, Arion, and Kalaratri were all present, their roles in the war having earned them seats at the table. Ayaman, 
as the guardian, was given the place of honor. The elders spoke of the challenges that lay ahead, restoring the ley lines, rebuilding the cities and villages, and ensuring that the forces of darkness could never rise again. It was a daunting task, but one that had to be undertaken with care and wisdom. One by one, the leaders voiced their opinions. Some argued for immediate reconstruction efforts, while others suggested focusing on fortifying defenses to prevent another invasion. The debate was long and heated, but in the end, it was Ayaman who spoke with a voice that commanded the attention of all. We cannot rebuild Shialkodi by focusing solely on our defenses, he said. We must heal the wounds of this war, not just in the land, but in the hearts of our people. They have suffered greatly, and it is our duty to restore hope and peace to their lives. The ley lines are the lifeblood of this realm. If we restore their balance, we restore Shialkodi itself. His words resonated with the council, and a plan was formed. A plan that would see the restoration of both the land and the spirit of its people. The ley lines would be repaired, villages rebuilt, and efforts would be made to unite the realm like never before. The journey to rebuild. Ayaman, alongside his trusted companions, took the lead in the efforts to restore the ley lines. They traveled across Shialkodi, mending the rifts in the earth and reawakening the ancient energies that had once sustained the realm. With each ley line they restored, the land began to heal, grass grew where there had been ash, rivers flowed where there had been drought, and the skies cleared of the dark clouds that had once loomed over them. But the task was not without its challenges. The damage caused by the dark tide was deep, and the ley lines were fragile. At times, it seemed as if the forces of nature themselves were resisting their efforts. But Ayaman's determination never wavered. Drawing on the powers he had gained and the bond with Kalaratri, who had become not just his companion but his equal in strength and resolve, Ayaman pushed forward. During these travels, Ayaman encountered the people of Shialkodi survivors of the war, who looked to him not just as a hero, but as a beacon of hope. In their eyes, Ayaman saw the resilience of a realm that refused to be broken. He met families who had lost everything but still found reasons to smile, children who played in the ruins of their homes with dreams of a better future, and elders who shared stories of the old days, inspiring Ayaman with their wisdom. A new era begins. Months passed, and the efforts to rebuild Shialkodi began to bear fruit. Villages were reconstructed, towns flourished, and the ley lines, now glowing with renewed vigor, brought life back to the land. The bastion of the Silver Moon became a symbol of unity and strength, a place where all could come to seek guidance and protection. Ayaman, who had once been a solitary guardian, now found himself at the center of a new era for Shialkodi. His companions Alara, Thrain, Arion, and Kalaratri stood by his side, each contributing to the realm's recovery in their own way. Alara became a diplomat, fostering alliances between the once divided regions. Thrain took on the role of military commander, ensuring that the realm's defenses were stronger than ever. Arion delved into the arcane, using his knowledge to advance the realm's understanding of magic and ley lines. As for Kalaratri, her bond with Ayaman had deepened into something beyond words. Together, they were a force of nature, the combined strength and wisdom guiding Shialkodi into this new era. But even as peace settled over the realm, Ayaman knew that vigilance was necessary. The forces of darkness had been driven back, but they were never truly gone. Ansa, the guardian of Shialkodi remained ever watchful, his sword at the ready, his heart steadfast. The festival of renewal, to celebrate the restoration of the realm, the people of Shialkodi held a grand festival, the festival of renewal. It was a time of joy and reflection, a moment to honor those who had fought and fallen in the war, and to look forward to a future of peace and prosperity. The festival was held at the bastion of the Silvermoon, and it drew people from all across the realm. 
there were feasts and dances, songs and stories, and everywhere, there was a sense of unity that had never been felt before. Ayaman and his companions were hailed as heroes, but they remained humble, knowing that it had been the strength of all the people of Shialkodi that had won the day. As the festival reached its climax, Ayaman stood before the gathered crowd and spoke from the heart. He thanked them for their bravery and resilience and reminded them that the true power of Shialkodi lay not in its lay lines or its warriors, but in the spirit of its people. Shialkodi is more than just a land, he said. It is a bond between us all, a bond forged in the fires of battle and tempered by our shared dreams. As long as we stand together, no darkness can ever truly conquer us. The crowd erupted in cheers, and as Ayaman looked out over them, he felt a deep sense of peace. The journey had been long and hard, but it had been worth every step. Shialkodi was safe, its people strong, and the future bright. Hash 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 epilogue. The Guardian's Watch. As the sun set on the festival of renewal, Ayaman found himself standing on the walls of the bastion, looking out over the land he had sworn to protect. The night was calm, the stars shining brightly in the sky, and for the first time in a long while, Ayaman felt a sense of true peace. Kalaratri joined him, her presence a comforting one. It's a new beginning, she said softly, her voice filled with the warmth of the shared bond. Yes, Ayaman agreed, a small smile on his lips. A new beginning, and a new era for Shialkodi. They stood there in silence, side by side, two guardians watching over the realm they had saved. The battles they had fought had forged them into something more than warriors, they had become symbols of hope, protectors of a world that would forever remember the names. And as they watched the dawn break over the horizon, Ayaman knew that whatever challenges the future held, he and Kalaratri would face them together. The guardian of Shialkodi had fulfilled his duty, but his journey was far from over. For as long as there was light in the world, there would be darkness seeking to snuff it out. But Ayaman was ready, his sword sharp, his heart true. The realm of Shialkodi was safe, but the guardian would always be vigilant, standing watch over the world he had sworn to protect. Prologue. The Whispering Woods. Though the festival of renewal had marked a new beginning for Shialkodi, the ancient realm was never truly at rest. For centuries, the Whispering Woods, a vast, enchanted forest on the outskirts of the realm, had been a place of mystery and wonder. Legends spoke of ancient spirits that roamed the woods, guarding secrets that were as old as the ley lines themselves. Few dared to venture deep into the forest, for it was said that the woods had a life of their own, twisting and shifting to confound those who entered. Ayaman had always felt a connection to the whispering woods. The forest's ancient energy resonated with the power of the ley lines, and Ayaman sensed that the woods held knowledge that could be crucial to Shialkodi's future. So, when reports came in of strange occurrences within the woods, mysterious lights, whispers on the wind, and trees that moved, as if alive, Ayaman knew it was time to investigate. With Kalaratri by his side, Ayaman set out for the whispering woods, determined to uncover the truth behind the disturbances. What they would find there would challenge everything they thought they knew about the realm, and set them on a path that would lead to the discovery of a power older and more dangerous than any they had faced before. Into the heart of the forest. The whispering woods were unlike any forest Ayaman had ever seen. The trees towered above them, their branches intertwining to form a canopy so thick that it blocked out most of the light. The air was thick with the scent of moss and earth, and the silence was broken only by the occasional rustle of leaves and the distant call of unseen creatures. As they ventured deeper into the forest, Ayaman and Kalaratri began to notice the oddities. The trees seemed to shift slightly when they weren't looking, and the path ahead would change, leading them in circles or to dead ends. The whispers that gave the woods their name were faint at first, just on the edge of hearing, but as they pressed on, they grew louder, 
as if the forest itself was speaking to them. Do you feel that? Ayaman asked, his voice hushed. Kalaratri nodded, her eyes scanning the trees warily. The forest is alive, but it's more than that. There's something, watching us. The realization sent a chill down Ayaman's spine. The woods were ancient, and their magic was powerful, but it was also unpredictable. They had to tread carefully, for they were venturing into a place where the rules of the outside world did not apply. After hours of walking, they came upon a clearing bathed in an ethereal light. In the center of the clearing stood a massive tree, its bark silver and its leaves glowing with a soft, otherworldly light. This was no ordinary tree, it was the heart of the whispering woods, the source of the ancient magic that permeated the forest. As they approached the tree, the whispers grew louder, forming words that Ayaman could almost understand. He reached out to touch the bark, and the moment his fingers made contact, the world around him shifted. The vision of the ancients. Ayaman was no longer in the clearing. He found himself standing in a vast, open landscape, the sky above him swirling with colors he had never seen before. The land was barren, but in the distance, he could see massive structures, ancient temples and towers that seemed to pulse with energy. This is the realm as it was before, a voice said, echoing in Ayaman's mind. Before the ley lines were tamed, before the world was divided. Ayaman turned to see a figure standing beside him, its form shifting and indistinct, like a shadow in the mist. Who are you? Ayaman asked, his voice filled with awe. I am one of the ancients, the figure replied. We were the first to walk this land, the first to harness the power of the ley lines. But our time has passed. Now, we exist only in memory, and in the echoes of the magic we left behind. The vision shifted, and Ayaman saw the ancients at the height of their power. They were beings of immense knowledge and strength, their understanding of the ley lines far surpassing anything Ayaman had ever known. But with that power came hubris, and Ayaman watched as the ancient civilization crumbled, torn apart by their own greed and the forces they had unleashed. We sought to control the ley lines, to bend them to our will, the ancient continued, its voice tinged with sorrow. But in doing so, we set in motion events that would lead to our downfall. The ley lines are not to be controlled, they are the lifeblood of the world, and to tamper with them is to invite disaster. The vision shifted again, showing the aftermath of the ancients' fall. The land was scarred, the ley lines fractured, and the world plunged into darkness. But from that darkness, new life emerged, and with it, new guardians, those who would protect the ley lines and ensure that the mistakes of the past were not repeated. You are one of those guardians, the ancient said, its voice growing fainter. But there is more you must learn. The ley lines are in danger once more, and the echoes of the past are stirring. You must find the truth of what happened here, and prevent history from repeating itself. Before Ayaman could ask more, the vision faded, and he found himself back in the clearing, his hand still resting on the silver tree. Kalaratri was beside him, her eyes wide with concern. Ayaman, what happened? Ayaman took a deep breath, trying to steady himself. I saw them, the ancients. They were the first to harness the ley lines, but their power destroyed them. And now, something is happening. The ley lines are in danger again. Kalaratri's expression grew serious. Then we need to find out what's causing it and stop it before it's too late. Ayaman nodded. The vision had shown him a glimpse of the past, but it had also given him a warning. The echoes of the ancients were stirring, and if they were not stopped, Shialkodi could face a disaster even greater than the one they had just averted. The Forgotten Temple. Guided by the whispers of the forest and the knowledge Ayaman had gained from the vision, they continued their journey deeper into the Whispering Woods. The forest seemed to respond to their purpose, the paths becoming clearer, the whispers more coherent. 
It was as if the woods themselves were leading them to their destination. After another day of travel, they reached the ruins of a temple hidden deep within the forest. The structure was ancient, its stones covered in moss and vines, but there was a palpable energy in the air, an energy that pulsed in time with the ley lines. This must be it, Ayaman said, his voice filled with awe. The Temple of the Ancients. They approached the temple cautiously, aware that they were walking in the footsteps of a civilization long lost to time. As they entered the temple, they were greeted by a sight that took their breath away. Massive murals depicting the history of the ancients, their rise to power, and their eventual fall. But it was the central chamber that held the most significance. In the center of the room was a pedestal, atop which rested a crystal that glowed with the same otherworldly light as the tree in the clearing. Ayaman could feel the power radiating from the crystal. It was a fragment of the ley lines, a piece of the ancient power that had once flowed through the entire realm. This is what we came for, Ayaman said, reaching out to touch the crystal. This is the key to understanding what happened to the ancients, and how to prevent it from happening again. As his hand closed around the crystal, another vision filled his mind. This time, it was not of the past, but of the future, a future in which the ley lines were torn asunder, plunging Shialkodi into chaos. The vision was brief, but it was enough to show Ayaman the gravity of the situation. When the vision faded, Ayaman knew what had to be done. The crystal was a link to the ley lines, and through it, they could stabilize the energy that had been thrown out of balance by the recent battles. But they would need to act quickly, for the forces that had destroyed the ancients were stirring once more. Epilogue. The Echoes of the Past. With the crystal in hand, Ayaman and Kalaratri left the Whispering Woods, their minds filled with the knowledge they had gained. The journey had been perilous, but it had also given them the tools they needed to protect the realm. As they made their way back to the bastion of the Silvermoon, Ayaman couldn't help but reflect on the vision of the ancients. Their story was a cautionary tale, a reminder of the dangers of unchecked power. But it was also a story of hope, for even in the darkest of times, there had been those who had fought to protect the world. Ayaman knew that the road ahead would not be easy. The echoes of the past were growing stronger, and the forces that had once destroyed the ancients were rising once more. But he was not alone. With Kalaratri by his side, and the crystal as the guide, they would face whatever challenges lay ahead. The guardian of Shialkodi had been given a new purpose. To not only protect the realm but to ensure that the mistakes of the past were not repeated. And as they returned to the bastion, Ayaman knew that this was only the beginning of a new chapter in their journey. For the echoes of the ancients still lingered, and the true battle for Shialkodi was yet to come. Prologue. A new threat emerges. The crystal from the ancient temple in the Whispering Woods had brought Ayaman and Kalaratri closer to understanding the true nature of the ley lines and the dangers they faced. But even as they returned to the bastion of the Silvermoon, a new threat was beginning to take shape, one that was far more insidious than anything they had encountered before. Unbeknownst to Ayaman and his companions, dark forces had been watching their every move, biding their time until the moment was right to strike. These forces, remnants of the power that had once destroyed the ancients, had been slowly gathering strength, feeding off the instability in the ley lines. And now, with the crystal in Ayaman's possession, they saw an opportunity to reclaim the power they had lost millennia ago. As Ayaman and Kalaratri prepared to use the crystal to stabilize the ley lines, these dark forces began to stir, their presence casting a shadow over the land. The battle for Shialkodi was far from over. If anything, it was only just beginning. The Council's Warning Upon returning to the bastion, Ayaman immediately convened a council with his closest allies, Alara, Thrain, Arion, and Kalaratri. He explained what they had found in the Whispering Woods and the visions that had shown him the fate of the ancients. 
The council listened intently, their expressions growing more grave as Ayaman spoke. The ley lines are still unstable, Ayaman concluded. And whatever forces caused the fall of the ancients are still out there. We need to act quickly to stabilize the ley lines before it's too late. Alara, ever the diplomat, spoke first. If what you say is true, then we're dealing with something far more dangerous than we anticipated. The entire realm could be at risk if these forces are allowed to rise again. Thrain, the battle-hardened commander, nodded in agreement. We need to fortify our defenses and prepare for the worst. If these dark forces are gathering, we need to be ready to fight them head on. Arion, the arcane scholar, looked troubled. The ley lines are more fragile than we thought. If we're not careful, any attempt to stabilize them could backfire, causing even more damage. We need to approach this with caution. Kalaratri, who had remained silent throughout the discussion, finally spoke up. I can feel it too, she said quietly. The darkness is growing. We can't afford to wait. We need to act now, before it's too late. The council fell silent, each member lost in their own thoughts. The stakes had never been higher, and the decisions they made in the coming days would determine the fate of Shialkodi. The shadow's first strike. As the council debated the next steps, the dark forces that had been gathering in the shadows made their move. In the dead of night, a wave of darkness swept across the realm, striking at key locations along the ley lines. Villages that had been rebuilt after the last war were suddenly engulfed in shadow, their inhabitants left in a state of fear and confusion. The ley lines, which had begun to stabilize, started to fluctuate wildly, causing tremors and magical disturbances throughout the land. News of the attacks reached the bastion of the Silvermoon just as the council was concluding its meeting. The reports were grim, entire villages had been cut off, their ley line connections severed, and strange creatures, born of shadow and darkness, had begun to emerge from the rifts. We're under attack, Thrain growled, slamming his fist on the table. These forces aren't waiting for us to make a move, they're coming straight for us. Ayaman's expression hardened. Then we have no choice. We need to use the crystal to stabilize the ley lines immediately. If we don't, the entire realm could be consumed by darkness. Alara looked worried. But what if something goes wrong? The ley lines are so fragile right now, if we're not careful, we could do more harm than good. We have to take that risk, Ayaman replied. If we do nothing, the darkness will only grow stronger. We need to act, and we need to act now. The ritual of stabilization. With the council's agreement, Ayaman and Arion began preparations for the ritual to stabilize the ley lines. The crystal they had retrieved from the Whispering Woods was the key, but the ritual would require precise timing and immense focus. Any mistake could result in catastrophe. The ritual site was chosen, a nexus point where several ley lines converged, just outside the bastion of the Silvermoon. Ayaman, Arion, and Kalaratri would lead the ritual, with Thrain and Alara standing guard against any attacks. As the sun set and the moon rose, casting an eerie light over the ritual site, the group began their work. Arion chanted ancient incantations, drawing on his vast knowledge of arcane magic, while Ayaman focused on channeling the energy of the crystal into the ley lines. Kalaratri stood beside Ayaman, her presence a steadying force as the power of the ley lines surged around them. For a moment, it seemed as if the ritual was working. The ley lines began to stabilize, their wild fluctuations calming as the crystal's energy flowed through them. But then, just as they were about to complete the ritual, a sudden wave of darkness erupted from the ground, shattering the nexus point and sending the group flying. Ayaman struggled to his feet, his heart pounding. The ley lines had been destabilized again, and this time, the damage was even worse. The ground shook violently, and cracks appeared in the earth, 
releasing bursts of dark energy that twisted and warped the landscape. We have to try again, Ayaman shouted, but before he could move, a figure emerged from the darkness, a being of shadow and malice, its form constantly shifting as if it were made of the very essence of the void. The creature, an embodiment of the dark forces they had been fighting, turned its gaze on Ayaman, its eyes glowing with an unnatural light. You cannot stop us, it hissed, its voice like the grinding of stones. The ancients tried and failed, and so will you. With a roar, the creature lunged at Ayaman, its claws extended. Ayaman barely had time to raise his sword before the creature was upon him, their blades clashing with a force that sent shockwaves through the air. Kalaratri leaped to Ayaman's side, her own powers flaring as she struck at the creature with all her might. But the darkness was relentless, and for every blow they landed, the creature seemed to grow stronger. The battle for the Nexus. As Ayaman and Kalaratri fought the creature, Thrain and Alara defended the ritual site from the hordes of shadowy creatures that had begun to emerge from the cracks in the earth. It was a desperate battle, the forces of darkness seemingly endless as they poured forth from the rifts. Despite their best efforts, it was clear that the ritual had failed. The ley lines were more unstable than ever, and the dark forces were growing in strength with every passing moment. If they didn't find a way to stop the creature and stabilize the nexus, the entire realm could be lost. But Ayaman refused to give up. Summoning every ounce of strength he had, he channeled the power of the crystal into his sword, its blade glowing with a bright, radiant light. With a final, powerful strike, Ayaman slashed through the creature's form, the light of the crystal tearing through the darkness and causing the creature to dissipate into nothingness. As the creature vanished, the ground beneath them began to stabilize, the cracks sealing up and the ley lines calming once more. The immediate threat had been dealt with, but the battle had taken its toll. The nexus was damaged, and the ley lines, though no longer in immediate danger of collapse, was still far from stable. Epilogue. A new enemy revealed. With the battle won and the nexus secured, Ayaman and his companions returned to the bastion of the Silvermoon to regroup. The ritual had not gone as planned, and while they had managed to fend off the immediate threat, the dark forces were still out there, gathering strength. As they rested and recovered, Ayaman couldn't shake the words of the creature from his mind. The ancients had tried and failed to stop these forces, and now it seemed that the same darkness that had destroyed them was threatening to do the same to Shialkodi. But Ayaman was not one to be easily discouraged. The battle had shown him the true extent of the threat they were facing, but it had also given him a new resolve. The dark forces were growing stronger, but so too were the bonds between him and his companions. Together, they would find a way to stop the darkness, no matter the cost. For now, they would regroup, gather their strength, and prepare for the battles yet to come. The shadows were gathering, and a new enemy had revealed itself. But Ayaman was ready. The guardian of Shialkodi had faced impossible odds before, and he would do so again. The battle for Shialkodi was far from over. The true fight was just beginning.